फ्रेंड्स आई एम तहसीन खान असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर एट भाग्य फार्मेसी कॉलेज सागर टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डील विद एन इंटरेस्टिंग एंड लर्निंग एपिसोड ऑफ बी फार्म फिफ्थ सेम ऑन द इंपॉर्टेंट टाइटल फाइटोकेमिकल स्क्रीनिंग वन स्क्रिप्टेड बाय डॉक्टर जी पी चौधरी रीडर स्कूल ऑफ फार्मेसी देवी अहिल्या यूनिवर्सिटी इंदौर एंड आशुतोष पाल जैन असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर एट भाग्य फार्मेसी कॉलेज सागर सो Let's start our episode while taking a look at what we are going to learn today. We will begin with the general introduction of the topic, followed by preparation of extracts, phytochemical tests for detection of common plant constituents. Here we come with the first module, the module number one, introduction. Plant-derived substances have recently become of great interest owing to their versatile applications. plant based natural constituents can be derived from any part of the plant like bark leaves flowers roots fruits seeds etc any part of the plant may contain active components phytochemistry means chemistry of natural products may be strategically placed somewhere in between natural product organic chemistry and plant biochemistry extraction is the separation of medicinally active portions of plant using selective solvents through standard procedures the products obtained from plants are relatively complex mixtures of metabolites in liquids or semi solid state or in dry powders form and are intended for oral or topically use these products contain complex mixtures of many medicinal plants metabolites such as alkaloids glycosides terpenoids flavonoids and lignans the aim of a standardized extraction technique for medicinal plant parts is to attain the therapeutically desired portions and to remove unwanted material by the treatment with a selective solvent known as menstrum the huge number of chemical substances that are present in the plant kingdom termed as constituents these constituents may be further divided into two main classes namely active constituents the chemical entities that are only responsible for existing therapeutic activities are usually termed as active constituents most drugs like alkaloids glycosides steroids and terpenoids bitter principles are the confide members of the particular category b inert constituents the chemical compound that are present in plant kingdom which do not possess any definite therapeutic principle but are useful as an adjunct either in herbal formulation or in surgery are collectively known as inert constituents example cellulose lignin suberin cutin starch and coloring matters secondary metabolites are the classes of compounds which are known to show curative activity against several ailments in man and therefore could explain the use traditional of medicinal plant for the treatment of some illnesses the medicinal efficacy of medicinal plants is highly dependent on the method of extraction the systematic screening of plant species with the purpose of discovering new bioactive compounds is a routine activity in many laboratories scientific analysis of plant components that are being utilized by the people worldwide understandings of phytochemical screening one following aspects are highlighted in this lesson number 1 choice of solvents number 2 steps involved in the extraction of medicinal plants number 3 methods of extraction of medicinal plants number 4 phytochemical tests here we have reached to the next module that is module number 2 choice of solvents the choice of solvent especially for commercial plants usually depends on many factors such as selectivity polarity boiling point chemical and thermal stability safety flammability and cost successful determination of biologically active moiety from plant material is largely dependent on the type of solvent used in the extraction procedure the following factors should be considered when selecting a solvent for commercial use solvent power that is selectivity only the active required constituents should be extracted from the plant material boiling temperature boiling point of solvent is low as possible in order to easily remove from the product reactivity 
the solvent should not react chemically with the extract viscosity a low viscosity of the solvent leads to low pressure drop and good heat and mass transfer safety the solvent should be non flammable and non corrosive cost the solvent should be easily available at low cost recovery the solvent easily separated from the extract to produce a solvent free extract the various solvents that are used the extraction procedures are water water is universal solvent used primarily by the traditional healers plant extracts from organic solvents have been found to give more consistent of active moiety compared to water extract acetone it dissolves many hydrophilic and lipophilic components from plants it is miscible with water and easily removes from water extract it is a very useful for extracting of phenolic compounds especially for antimicrobial studies a study reported that extraction of tannins and other phenolics was better in aqueous acetone than in aqueous methanol alcohol ethanol is easily penetrating the cellular membrane to extract the intracellular ingredients from the plant material methanol is more polar than ethanol but due to its cytotoxic nature it is unsuitable for extraction next is chloroform terpenoid lactones have been obtained by successive extractions of dried bark with hexane chloroform and methanol chloroform the higher concentration of more bioactive flavonoids compound were detected with ethanol 70% due to its higher polarity than pure ethanol ether ether is commonly used selectively for the extraction of cumarins and fatty acids dichloromethanol it is a solvent especially used for the selective extraction of only terpenoids the figure number 2 represents solvents used for the active moiety extraction which includes water alcohol ether acetone and chloroform water extracts starch saponins terpenoids tannins polypeptides alcohol tannins terpenoids polyphenols esterols and alkaloids ether alkaloids cumarins fatty acids and terpenoids acetone flavonols phenol and chloroform terpenoids and flavonoids moving to our next module module number 3 steps involved in the extraction of medicinal plants many countries in the world have a god gifted natural reserves of medicinal plants in the past lack of knowledge non availability of sufficient storage facilities and proper scientific methods of cultivation of useful medicinal plants almost reached a point of not only depletion but also extinction with the advent of scientific knowledge abundantly available these medicinal plants are now grown in an organized fashion whereby proper identification right cultivation to yield maximum desired chemical constituents the schematic development of a drug from a medicinal plant that may serve as a fruitful guide for various phytochemistry studies figure number 3 represents the schematic development of a drug from a medicinal plant first is medicinal plant authentication literature survey collection based on time plant size and month segregation of individual part drying shade pulverization artificial dryer hot air oven and electric bulb under sun with carefully extraction cold extraction slow and low denaturation hot extraction fast and more degradation separation purification column chromatography and centrifugation use for separation tlc gc hplc hptlc and electroporiosis for purification identification pure compound known comparing physical or spectral data with standard unknown elemental analysis ir uv and mass spectra biological evaluation formulations pharmacological or toxicology in order to extract medicinal ingredients from plant following steps involve in the extraction of medicinal plants number 1 size reduction number 2 extraction which includes a cold aqueous percolation b hot aqueous extraction that is decoction 
number 3 is filtration number 4 spray drying and number 5 concentration so here we will discuss number 1 size reduction the dried plant raw material is disintegrated by hammer mill or disc pulverizer which has built in seeds size reduction increases the surface area which in turn enhances the mass transfer of active principle from plant material to the solvent the 30 40 mesh size is optimal while smaller particles may become slimy during extraction and generate difficulty during filtration number 2 solvent extraction the principle of solid liquid extraction is that when a solid material comes in contact with a solvent the soluble components in the solid material move to the solvent extraction of the plant constituents is carried out in two ways a cold percolation the powdered material is fed into the percolator along with a suitable solvent the material is left in contact with the solvent until equilibrium of the active principle is achieved the solvent extract known as micella is taken out from the bottom discharge valve of a percolator overall the plant material is washed four to five times until it gets exhausted all washes from the percolator are pooled and concentrated b hot percolation high temperature of the solvent increases the solubility of the active moieties which increases the concentration gradient and therefore enhances the mass transfer of active principles from plant material to the solvent the temperature of the extract in the percolator is regulating by a steam solenoid valve through a temperature indicator controller third is filtration the mark is exhausted plant material that retained at the false bottom and the extract is received in the holding tank from the holding tank the extract is pumped into a sparkler filter to remove fine or colloid particles from the extract number four is spray drying the filtered extract is subjected to spray drying with a high pressure pump at a controlled feed rate and temperature to get dry powder the desired particle size of the product is obtained by controlling the inside temperature and pressure of the chamber number fifth is concentration concentration and drying procedures should ensure the safety and stability of the active constituents the enriched extract from percolators or extractors known as micella is fed into a wiped film evaporator where it is concentrated under vacuum to produce a thick concentrated extract the concentrated extract is further fed into vacuum chamber dryer to produce a solid mass free from solvent lyophilization although expensive is increasingly employed friends coming to our next module that is module number 4 before moving to our next module about methods of extraction of medicinal plants i would like to suggest you to visit our website www.cec.nic.in for further readings and learning of more topics associated with your bee farm syllabus here you will find many lectures e content faqs lors and many more hope this site will be a catalyst of learning for you now coming to methods of extraction of medicinal plants a maceration in maceration whole or coarsely powdered medicinal plant is kept in contact with the solvent in a stopper container whole assembly is stand at room temperature for a defined period with frequent agitation until soluble matter is dissolved this method is best suitable for use in case of the thermolabile drugs here the figure number 4 explaining about the maceration which is a maceration assembly b infusion it is a dilute solution of the easily soluble components of the crude drugs fresh infusions are prepared by macerating the solids for a short period of time with either cold or boiling water c digestion it is a form of maceration in which gentle heat is used during the process of extraction it is used when slightly increased temperature is not objectionable the solvent efficiency of the menstruum is thereby increased 
Now, the figure number 5 which represents a microwave digestion system. This digestion system is equipped with Teflon vessel and uses automated temperature and pressure programs for digestion. It is used for total digestion and extraction of rock tissues and percolation. Percolation. A percolator is a narrow cone shaped vessel open at both ends generally used. The solid ingredients are moistened with an appropriate amount of the specified menstruum and allowed to stand for approximately 4 hours in a well closed container. Additional menstruum is added as required until the percolate measures about 3 quarters of the required volume of the finished product. Here the figure number 6 represents commercial scale percolator. E. Hot continuous extraction or sock slit. Sock slit extraction is only required where the desired compound has a limited solubility in a solvent and the impurity is insoluble in that solvent. In this technique, the finely ground crude drug packed in a porous bag that is thimble which is placed in chamber E of the sock slit apparatus which is explained in our figure 7. The extracting solvent in flask is heated and its vapors condense in condenser. The condensed extractant drip into the thimble containing the crude drug and extracts it by contact. This process is continuous and is carried out until a drop of solvent from the siphon tube does not leave residue when evaporated. It becomes much more economical and viable when converted into a continuous extraction procedure on medium or large scale F counter current extraction. In counter current extraction that is CCE, wet raw material is pulverized using tooth disc disintegrator to produce fine slurry. In this process the material to be extracted is moved in one direction within a cylindrical extractor where it comes in contact with extraction solvent. The further the starting material moves, the more concentrated the extract becomes. The process is highly efficient requiring little time and posing no risk from high temperature. Here the figure number 8 represents the counter current extraction with extended mixing time. G. Ultrasound extraction that is sonication. The procedure involves the use of ultrasound with frequencies ranging from 20 kilohertz to 2000 kilohertz. This increases the permeability of cell walls and produces cavitation. Its large scale applications is limited due to the higher cost and undesirable changes in active constituents. Here the figure number 9 represents schematic diagram of ultrasound sonicator. Number H supercritical fluid extraction. Supercritical fluid extraction that is SFE is an alternative sample preparation method with general goals of reduced use of organic solvents and increased sample throughout. In this technique carbon dioxide used as the extracting fluid which is inexpensive and safe. Organic solvents are frequently added to the carbon dioxide extracting fluid to alleviate the polarity limitations. SFE finds extensive application in the extraction of pesticides. Environmental samples, foods and fragrances, essential oils, polymers and natural products. Figure number 10 represents schematic diagram of supercritical fluid extractors. Phytonic process. The core of the solvent is 1122 tetrafluoroethane also known as hydrofluorocarbon 134A that is HFC 134A has been applied to the extracting a specific class of phytoconstituents. The solvent is not flammable, toxic or ozone depleting and less threatening to the environment. The technique is being used in the extraction of high quality essential oils, oleoresins, natural food colors, flavors and aromatic oils from all manners of plant materials. 
Here we have reached to our next module that is module number 5. Phytochemical test. The plant extracts were subjected to qualitative tests for detection of phytoconstituents present in it with carbohydrates, proteins and free amino acids, alkaloids, glycosides, phenolic compounds and tannins, gums and mucilages, flavonoids, steroids and saponins. A. Test for carbohydrates. The little amount of extracts was dissolved in 5 ml of distilled water and it is filtered. The filtrate was subjected to analysis for the presence of carbohydrates and glycosides. A. Molish test. The test is positive with soluble and insoluble carbohydrate. The filtrate was mixed with 2 to 3 drops of 1% alcoholic alpha naphthol and concentrated sulfuric acid was added and appearance of purple color ring at the junction of two liquids. B. Fehling's test. The filtrate was heated with equal quantity of Fehling's A and B solution. Brick red precipitate was obtained indicates the presence of carbohydrates. B. Test for proteins and free amino acids. A small quantity of extracts were dissolved separately in a few ml of water and treated with A. Melon's reagent. Appearance of white precipitate shows the presence of protein and free amino acids. B. Ninhydrin reagent. Appearance of violet color shows the presence of protein and free amino acids. C. Biorit test. Equal volume of 5% solution of sodium hydroxide and 1% solution of copper sulfate were added. Appearance of pink color shows the presence of proteins and free amino acids. D. Warming test. Heat the test solution in boiling water bath. Proteins get coagulated. Number C is test for gums and mucilages. A. Treat the test solution with ruthenium red solution. Pink color shows the presence of mucilage. Number B. Treat the test solution with thionine solution. After 15 minutes wash with ethanol, appearance of violet red color shows the presence of mucilage. D. Test of alkaloids. A little fraction of the solvent, free petroleum ether, hexane, alcohol and aqueous extracts were mixed individually with a small amount of drops of dilute hydrochloric acid and it is filtered. The filtrate was evaluated carefully with different alkaloidal reagents such as A. Mayer's reagent which includes potassium mercuric iodide solution, cream precipitates, B. Dragendorff's reagent, potassium bismuth iodide solution, reddish brown precipitate, C. Hager's reagent, saturated solution of picric acid, yellow precipitate, D. Wegener's reagent, iodine potassium iodide solution, reddish brown precipitate. Number E, test for tannins and phenolic compounds. A small quantity of extracts were dissolved individually in water and tested for presence of phenolic compounds and tannins with A, ferric chloride test 5%, violet color B, gelatin test 1%, Solution of gelatin containing 10% NaCl white precipitate. C. Gold beater's skin test. Small pieces of gold beater's skin add with 2% HCl. Rinse a distilled water place in solution to be tested for 5 minutes. After wash with distilled water and transfer to 1% ferrous sulfate solution. A black color of skin indicates presence of tannins. F is test for steroids. A. Salkovaski's test. Herbal extract when shaken with concentrated sulfuric acid and on a standing representing red color. B. Lieberman Burchard test. Plant extract with few drops of acetic anhydride and 1 ml of concentrated sulfuric acid from the side gives reddish ring between junctions. G. Test for glycosides. Sodium hydroxide reagents 
dissolve a small amount of alcoholic extract in 1 ml water and add sodium hydroxide solution. A yellow color indicates the presence of glycosides. B. Keller Kilani's test. Dissolve the extract in water with glacial acetic acid and ferric chloride and concentrated sulfuric acid. They give brown ring at the junction. C. Picrate paper test for cyanogenic glycosides. Extracts are added with few drops of chloroform and concentrated sulfuric acid. The test tube is tightly stopped with picrate paper predicting into the test tube when capped on water bath. Positive sample turns yellow picrate paper into red. H is test for flavonoids. A. Ferric chloride test. Alcoholic solution of the extract mixed with few drops of neutral ferric chloride. Solution gives green color. B. Lead acetate test. Alcoholic solution of the extracts mixed with few drops of 10% lead acetate gives yellow precipitate. I. Test for saponins. First, foam test. A small amount of extract is shaken with a little quantity of water. The foam produced persists for 10 minutes. It confirms the presence of saponins. Second is hemolysis test. To 2 ml normal saline in 2 test tubes. 2 ml distilled water is added to 1 and 2 ml of 1% extract. To the other 5 drops of blood is added to each test tube and gently mixed with the content. Hemolysis observed under the microscope in the tube containing the extracts indicates the presence of saponins. Summary. In this chapter, we described an overview of the preparation of extracts from plants using organic solvents with emphasis on common problems encountered and methods of their reduction or elimination. Successful extraction begins with careful selection and preparation of plant samples and through review of the appropriate literature for suitable protocols for a particular class of compounds or plant species. Here we describe the different stages of extractions from the pre-extraction and extraction is equally important in the study of medicinal plants. Plant secondary metabolites are currently the subject of much research interest but their extraction as part of phytochemical or biological investigations presents specific challenges that must be addressed throughout the extraction process. It can be concluded that no universal extraction methods is the ideal method and each extraction procedure is unique to the plants. We also discussed some general aspects of phytochemical examinations were carried out for all the extracts as per the standard methods. With all this information, here we come to the end of today's lecture, Phytochemical Screening 1. I will be back with few more lectures in the series. Do keep in mind what we discussed today. Time for you to self-study. If you want to learn more and enhance your knowledge, you may log on to our website for MCQs, quizzes, LORs, on www.cec.nic.in. Till then, keep studying. Goodbye. Thank you.